Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. And today we're with Michelle Fabrica, our love and relationship coach. And good morning, Michelle. Good morning, Art. Good morning, John. Good morning, Michelle. It's great to see you again, as always. By the way, um, you are always filled with good practical advice uh, for people uh, about, you know, all the things that happen when we live our lives. It's really useful stuff. But I have a, I can't say it's a bone to pick, but I do have a question. I feel a little stupid. I've heard you refer to the five love languages. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. I, I mean, I have a sense that somebody wrote about five love languages, but what do, explain what the five love languages are for me and maybe others. Sure, yeah, absolutely, yeah. So Dr. Ger Gary Chapman wrote a book in 2015 called The Five Love Languages, and he's gone on to write other books as well. And basically the idea behind it is that he noticed in conversation with his, uh, he's a, a therapist or counselor, he noticed that in his sessions with couples, there were something that's missing in some of the, the ways that couples express and receive love from each other. So the idea behind it is that we're all different and obviously we're different in different ways. And so sometimes the way we might choose to express love to our partner, they might not, it might not really land for them. It might not be that compelling. Like say I, you know, I buy you a gift and you're like, I don't like gifts. It's like, this isn't working for me. So basically the idea is how do we express and receive love so that we keep each other's love tank full, right? <laughs> I love that. And he, he broke it down to five languages? Yes, quote, quote that's right. Languages? Yeah, right, that's right. So they're kind of categories and ways of doing that. So, and there, there are quizzes available for singles or couples and even for your kids to really know, you know, how, how do, um, love each other, right? I mean, it seems like we think we know how to do that, but it's it's good to be specific and make sure that it's actually being received. Okay, so what are they? Yeah, yeah, so um, yeah, so let me just go, so what I wanna talk about specifically is about, it's, and this sounds really technical, but it's the way that we transmit love, right? So like, it's the way we express it is one thing, and then the way the person receives it is another. So we might be, good at expressing love through gifts, but we don't really know how to say it in words. And so this is just differences. So we wanna make sure that we, we know our partner's love languages, we know ours, and we communicate about that. So yeah, let's get into it, yeah. Um, so the first one is words of affirmation. And this is basically you know verbal expression, compliments, um, encouragement, acknowledgement and empathy and basically seeing, you know, something through your partner's point of view. Okay. Um, and, and I, that makes, see, that makes sense. I can, yeah, I, I can picture some people who are, who need that affirmation, you know, they, but plus they need words. They don't need action. Right, right, yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, and, and I'll go through them all and we can kind of see which ones resonate with, you know, and with, all of you and me and whatever. So okay. the next one is acts of service. And this is when we do things for our partner, you know, just because and this can be, maybe we're, you know, um, fill your partner's gas tank when you take their car out or something like that. Or you, um, you know, there's a chore that they typically do, but you know, they're really tired. So you step in and do it for them. Um, one of the things that uh, Dave did for me early in my relationship, I have an older car and he set up my car with Bluetooth so I can play music for my phone in my car. I mean, I know that new cars have this feature, but <laughs> this was like a game changer. Every time I got in my car, I put on my favorite music. Anyway, so I'm getting I, excited. I really Dave, like music. Dave sounds like a keeper. <laughs> I know, yeah. I know. Now, I know. this is interesting. Did he, did he instinctively know that you would like that service, that you are well, receptive to service? Love, yeah, I don't think he it? knew that then. We hadn't really, you know, we hadn't gone through the quizzes, I don't think, at that point. I mean, I kind of knew of the things I, I like, but what's interesting, he pointed out to me, we were talking about this last night, is that, you know, that was actually also a gift because he went and bought the equipment. I mean, you know, not super expensive, but, you know, bought the equipment, installed right. it, and uh, I think he might have told me he was going to do it because, I mean, you know, how do you take somebody's key? We weren't living together at the time, and you take someone's keys and you go, you know, fiddle with their car or something. But yeah. so he, so I knew it was coming, but I just, I didn't, 
anyway, the impact of it was huge. And I, I still even appreciate it. You know, I love, anyway, it's been a couple of years and I still enjoy it. So um, yeah. I still have my car. So well, yeah, anyway, that's an idea of something, you know, that's, go, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good. All right. So um, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go yes, ahead. You did. Next one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The next one is receiving gifts. So some people love, you know, little, you know, small things, big things, whether it's flowers where, oh, I got you, you know, this special thing that I thought you would like. And um, yeah, so it shows that we're thinking of the other person and that they're special to us. And that, you know, maybe when you go on a trip, you bring back a gift, you know, for your loved one, if that's something that is, you know, a love language of theirs or one of the higher ones. We, we all kind of respond to multiple things, but usually we have a primary one or secondary one, depending. Uh, so the next one is quality time. And this is, basically just about focused attention and it can include, you know, conversation, um, which, you know, in listening or some moms, it's just, you know, sharing an activity together, um, going for a walk together, watching TV together, you know, sitting, you know, just being together could be in silence. So it's just spending time together. Yeah. Well, I, that, uh, all of these seem to be important, but what you're saying is that for, each of us, one of them will be more important. Well, yes and no. I would say that not just one, because I mean, I was kind of like 33% was uh, touch, when, which I'm going to be the physical touch, the last one. And then 27% was words of affirmation, and acts of service. You know what I mean? So we can have a whole. Oh, I see. Okay. So when you, you know, take it, the test, you get different exactly, uh, scale exactly. results. Okay. Exactly. All right. So there's, yeah, let's yeah. see, one yeah. words of affirmation, so, acts of service. Receiving gifts and quality time. There must be a fifth one. Yeah, and physical touch is the other one. So this is oh, I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so this is affection, hugs, holding hands, and it does include sex and sexual intimacy, but it also is other kinds. You know, being you know holding hands in public or a massage or dancing or even like you know kind of comforting touch when you you know, your partner's talking and you, you know, put a hand on the shoulder. Oh my God, I love that that happened to you today. Or, you know, that kind of thing. So we basically are even sitting next to each other, touching, you know, maybe watching a movie and you're sitting next to each other. That's kind of part of that physical touch. Of course, it's also quality time. So, you know, sometimes you're hitting several notes with, uh, you know, a couple things there. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so you, it, it, it sounds like, um, as you just started to say, you can interpret things, the actions, uh, multiple ways, like uh, Dave's gift to you was a gift, but was also service. Right, right. Um, yeah. uh, touching could be quality time, but it could be touching. So right. and, and when, right. you, when you take the quiz, uh, we take it individually, we learn about ourselves. How do we learn about our partner? Right. So you would need your partner to also take the quiz okay. or even somebody you're dating. I mean, usually I, I'm, I'm guessing that the two of you have been married a long time. You probably already have a sense of the things that you can do to, you know, that you're so that your you know, partner feels sure. loved. Yeah, absolutely. I know. For instance, I know uh, when I end up on the couch, what I've done wrong. OK, I know that. <laughs> You mean you no, went just, up to the doghouse? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm just kidding. Um, and, and but it does, so, it, so if he wants to sleep on the couch, he knows what to do. Yeah. <laughs> but, it, you know, this does sound very useful because um, it sounds to me like these are, I don't know what you call it, habits or proclivities or they're part of our personality. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. we're not... I'm, me, I'm talking about myself now. I'm not always aware of my personality or who I'm, what I'm doing, and you know, you, you just kind of stumble through life. <laughs> you don't, you don't exactly. always cognitively aware of uh, what you're doing right or wrong. Let me put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and particularly when it comes to relationships. Yeah, and that's how we learn about relationships is we stumble in from you know, whenever we first start connecting with others, right? We're really little, but even like romantic relationships and, and even in midlife and beyond, you know, our audience here, it's like, sometimes we're, we had patterns with somebody like, what was interesting is that like Dave's former wife, she's passed away, right? She, he's a widower. I think I've mentioned that before. His wife was not interested in um, the, the effort, words of affirmation, got the words wrong. So that was none, nothing that he was practiced in doing. But for me, it was actually one of my 
like I, that was important to me. It was one of the higher ones. And so he kind of had to stumble through to like, you know, I didn't, is this guy into me? Like I, we had some dates. It's like, I wasn't sure. And yet he kept calling yeah. me and I was like, I guess he's interested in me, but I didn't hear the word, you know, those kinds of words. So, so we have to sometimes learn new ones in a new relationship or even sometimes as we uh, grow, we might decide, wow, I really love hearing this more from you, you know, and we can coach each other, right? We can say, yeah. oh, this would mean a lot to me if, you know, we sat together tonight or whatever. So it, it's not like you just, you hold your, you know, you hold your results to yourself, you know, share, share widely your, your love languages. Right. And, and it's all about any relationship is sharing what you like and what you don't like so that exactly. your partner knows what you like and don't like. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And it's an invitation. It's not like, you know, hey, I'm expecting my, you know, <laughs> this, yeah. that, this many gifts or, you know, we got to be kind of free with it, right? You know, I was just, well, thinking, it's interesting. I was just thinking, Michelle, most of the uh, conversations we have, which are really, really important and eye opening in many cases, are dealing with a problem. And mm. this is this is the first like totally positive. Hey, mm. by the way, even if things are going great, if you if you pay attention to these five love languages or whatever versions of things you want to become more attuned to your partner, uh, then it could make whatever is good better. Yeah, it's not fixing something that's broken. It's just taking what's good and making it better. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm always interested in finding those things for for myself, my, my relationship with, you know, Dave, my kids, my clients, like what can we, how can we bring this up? Because, you know, there is, and we, we'll talk about this in other videos, but there is like kind of the negativity bias that, that can come in and there's just like, yeah, things can just sometimes get stale or kind of degrade over time in terms of a connection. And so what can, we want to keep it, like we want to keep our love tanks full, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, M Michelle, you just said something about, uh, your clients. And I thought to myself, um, the love languages, even though, you know, love is a big word, there's all kinds of love. Uh, you have love for your clients, you have love for your friends. The love languages are really applicable for any relationship, aren't they? I mean, yeah, yeah, they are. You, you know, I've, for instance, I'm trying to, I, I, the, the one about touching, whatever it is that is, uh, uh, physical touch. Physical yeah. touch. I know there are some people that I've met in business that are touchers. Mm. You know, they they love to they they shake hands, they hold your hand a little longer, they'll put their hand on your shoulder or your forearm or, and that's just the way some people are. And mm -hmm. if I were smart enough to recognize that, I could use that in building that relationship, even though it's a business relationship. Well, as a former New Yorker, you're worried about your, your wallet. So he puts a hand, <laughs> holds your hand and puts a hand on your shoulder. It's just checking yeah. the wallet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, there is a caveat. So when I was talking about my clients, I mean, helping them discover what works for them in their relationships. And sure. yet, obviously, you know, some of these are, yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, a, se a session with a client is quality time, really focused attention on them, right? right. Um, the other thing I want to say is that sometimes there can be a mismatch where someone needs, let's say, physical touch and the other person just is not that comfortable with that level of touch or just doesn't like certain. And so, you know, there can be a mismatch with people sometimes. And that's just sure. the way it is that, you know, relationships don't always don't always work. Yeah. 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 Well, I think, but if it's, time, I th I think it's time for us to affirm our absolute <laughs> at Ad, Affirm ad, our love for Michelle. Yes. <laughs> our adulation and love. Yes. It's also time to say goodbye. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, this has been this has been really fascinating stuff. And uh, thank you. Now I know what we've been talking about for all these months. Every time you reference love languages. But I'm going to take the uh, the quiz. Do you, can you, you give me the, quiz, yeah. the... Absolutely. Yeah. I, um, Give me the URL so I can yeah, uh, go we'll, and we'll and put it in the that. description too. We'll put it in the description. Okay, good. Are you gonna, and, yeah. All right, and I think that's important because that way we can all take the quiz, and I'm sure at once I take it, I'll have an even better understanding of everything we've talked about. This has been wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Great to be here with you both. 
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.